Hey now, friends, Lola here with The Smoking Prophet. So I got a super spontaneous message to share with you. I usually turn on my camera and go live when things like this happen, but not today because today has been a busy day. So I was reading some Bible verses earlier with my family and something popped out to me that I had never seen before from this text of very common scripture. So I'm going to share with you a little nugget today, a little inspirational piece of wisdom that that comes from a very, very common scripture, but I can almost guarantee that you're not going to think that this nugget, this gem, this jewel that popped out to me from the text, from the scripture, from the Bible verse, you're not going to think that it's common. You're going to think that it's uncommon. I can almost venture to say that you've probably never heard anyone say this to you before concerning this section of scripture. I know you probably want to hear what it is. So let's go ahead and start. So this is from Matthew chapter five, verses 13 through 16. In this scripture, Jesus is talking with his disciples and also crowds of people. He's just talking to them. And he initially shared the Beatitudes. This is when he had his sermon on the Mount. So it says here in the New King James Version, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And then Jesus goes on to teach a bunch of different stuff that if we look at it and we listen to it and try to apply it, it would help help us be nicer people. He talks about how harmful things start in our heart and how we should forgive others quickly and how we should not be consumed with anger and different things, just a bunch of different stuff. And then something that I really, really enjoy out of Matthew 5 and 45, which says that God is just good and that he causes good things to happen to people who deserve it and people who you may think don't deserve it. So yeah, that chapter, chapter five is it's full of a lot of nuggets, but let me go with this very, very common piece of text and share something that is not common, something that you probably haven't heard before based on scripture. So here it is, verse 13, you're the salt of the earth. In this section of scripture, Jesus is talking about us being salt and light. We've heard that before. When I think about salt, I think about the fact that salt is a preservative. When I was a kid and I used to visit the country all the time with my grandparents, and I am from the country, like I'm from the South. My husband loves it because he's from the city. So he has a country girl. He doesn't even know he has a country girl. I was outside one day talking and I was saying something kind of loud so that he could hear me in another part of the yard. And my grandmother was like, quiet down, country girl. <laughs> but anyways, back Back to this, I remember seeing like a meat house or a place where there was like actual hogs. So hogs are like really, really big pigs. They're huge and massive and really kind of gross looking. But anyways, there were like these slabs of meat hanging from the ceiling. And I just remember seeing that. And I remember knowing that salt was used to help preserve the meat and to help cure it. And so that's what I think about when I think about salt. But as I was reading this text this morning and asking my family for their thoughts, what came to mind is salt makes food taste good. When they said that, I said, yeah, salt does make food taste good. It makes it taste better. And then I was like, you know, now that I think about it, this is why our grandmother doesn't always like us bringing her salt free food because it doesn't really taste good. So the first part that we pulled out from that text is something you've heard before. But if you just keep listening, I'm going to tell you something that is uncommon. I, I believe that you will really think what I share with you that I pulled out from this text is uncommon. But let me just get through it and get to that point. So this first part I'm going to share is common. So we know that salt, it has some good qualities. And Jesus is comparing us to salt here. And then the next thing it says in verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. And so what I did at this point is I actually did a demonstration with light. I turned the flashlight on on my phone and I said, do you see what happens when we turn light on? Light helps us see. Light causes things to be seen. You put light 
light with other light, the light is magnified. But if you cover the light up and then I took a towel and I put it over my phone, I said, if you cover that light up, that light isn't seen. So it's not really helpful. It's not really doing any good. So then I went on to verse 16 and it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. So I went on to explain like, hey, we don't want to hide our light. We we don't want to hide what we do and what we do is good because that's what salt does. It does good stuff. So we don't want to hide the good that we do. We also don't want to be the people that publicize it on the internet or set up a video camera every time we're going to do something nice or we do something nice for someone and then we got to go tell someone else about it. We don't want to be those types of people. But what we want to do is just do nice things. And as we do nice things, I said, what does it do? And they said, it lets people see Jesus. It lets people see God. And I said, yeah, it does. I said, because they see him in us. So I read that verse this morning, went over that, that normal stuff that you usually hear when you talk about this verse of text. But then I came back and read it again and had another discussion. And this was at 12, 26 PM today. I know because I wrote it down when the thought popped out, but let me read this again. Verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. As I read that a second time, we thought about salt and really everything that it is and that it does make things taste good. It does keep things from spoiling. It does help meat when there's no refrigerator stay edible. It does keep it in good standing so that it can be used later. Salt is good. And if Jesus said that we're the salt of the earth, that means that we are the good of the earth. He says, we are the salt of the earth. Now I know that's common. That's common, right? And I'm not trying to say that we are good because something that's kind of like my pet peeve is when people tell me I'm a good person or they've said to me, you're a good person. And I'm like, yeah, I don't like when people say that because Jesus was referred to as good in the Bible. Somebody said good teacher to him. And you know what he said? He said, no, 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 no. Nobody's good but God. So when I hear that and people saying I'm good or saying that somebody else is good, I may not say anything, but in my head, I'm thinking ain't nobody good but God because all of us have got some nastiness in us. But back to this point, we're the good stuff in the earth. We're the good of the earth. The earth is better because of us. He says here, you are the salt of the earth. If we took out the word salt and we put good in there, you are the good of the earth. And then when we went on to read and it was like, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? And I asked my little people, I said, what does that word but mean? When you hear that word in a sentence or you're talking to someone and they say, but, and they were like, but really negates the other stuff that came before it. I say, yeah, it kind of does. It cancels it. So if we look at this text here, you are the salt of the earth. But if you lose your flavor, if you lose the stuff about you that causes you to be good, you cancel the other part about you being the good of the earth. You're no longer the good of the earth, but you are, you are the good of the earth. And because you are the good of the earth, don't hide it. And then here's the uncommon part that I heard this morning as I was reading this. If we're the good of the earth, that means that us existing makes the world better. Did you catch that? You existing, you existing, you being born makes the world better. So if you've ever questioned like, man, my life could not be significant enough, man, there's got to be no reason I'm on this planet. There's nothing that I can contribute. Let me just tell you by you existing, you make the world better because you are the salt. You are the good of the earth. And sometimes it doesn't feel like we can be the good of the earth because there's been something that has canceled out our flavor, our seasoning, our goodness, but you can get it back. So let me just pray. So Father, in the name of Jesus, and the reason I pray in the name of Jesus is because scripture teaches me that in John chapter 14, verses 13 through 14, Jesus told his disciples to pray in his name. And he said that when you prayed in his name, Jesus's name, that God would do it and that glory would be brought to God by doing that. And so that's why I pray in Jesus name. Not sure why you pray in Jesus name. If you don't, if you pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, or if you just learn to pray, whatever it is, I pray in Jesus' name. And you can go check out that scripture to see why. John chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. But anywho, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for today. I thank you for letting me take that piece of very common scripture and you revealing 
something new to me because me and my family sat and pondered over it a few times. God, I thank you for showing me, my family, and the people listening that by us merely existing, we make the world better. Father, in the moments where we don't feel like that, let us be reminded that we make the world better. Let someone walk up to us and say, your smile brightens my day. Let someone come up to us and say, you got me a card and that was so nice. I really needed it in the moment you got it for me. Thank you. Let someone come up to us and say, man, your work ethic. I admire it. I wish I had your work ethic. Let someone come up to us and acknowledge the good that you have put in us. And as that happens, Father, let the good in us grow and let it grow and grow and grow and grow so that ultimately people just begin to see you and us, God, so that it causes our light to shine and bring glory to you, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. That's my only message for today. I hope y'all enjoyed that message. I totally enjoyed giving it to you. Until next time, have the most amazing life. Bye! Spiritually, creatively, socially, spiritually, creatively, socially, Your skills and gifts and mold you